The Xiaomi Mi Notebook Pro has to be one of the best engineered products I have ever seen coming from Xiaomi. It's got power, it's got looks, and most importantly, it's got a damn good quiet cooling solution. But how good is it, and what can it really do? The first thing you'll notice is of course the sleek looking design. It's very minimal, including minimal branding, nothing flashy, and yes, it does scream Apple. Inside the box you'll get the laptop, the manual, a high quality standard Type-C wall adapter, as well as a Type-C to Type-C charging cable. Very standard stuff, and very sleek looking. There is a very nice selection of ports, we got two Type-C ports on the right, with the first one being the charging port, as well as an SD card reader that runs at 2.0 speeds. That's kinda unfortunate, but hey, at least we have one. On the left side, we once again have a pretty nice selection of two full-size USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI, as well as a 3.5mm headset jack, so that's audio and microphone in one. It can single-handedly be opened, while doing so is when you'll notice the absolutely awesome solid hinge that feels great to open and close, and it definitely beats many of the ThinkPad hinges out there. Inside is where you will again notice its very minimal design, consisting of a fantastic keyboard that has plenty of depth, perfect spacing, and yes, it is backlit. Followed by yet another nicely designed and sized touchpad that allows for precision use with mouse acceleration off, which is awesome and this is the first time that I am able to do that on a laptop, offering great responsiveness to that of an old ThinkPad without getting in the way of typing. And taking a look at the top right corner of the touchpad is where you'll find the super responsive fingerprint scanner. And no, this is not the type where you'll slide your finger across it, this works by simply laying your finger onto it, just like you would on a high-end smartphone and once again, it is just super responsive, beats many of the scanners out there, and it is something that you will definitely be using multiple times throughout your day. In fact, this script was actually typed and edited on this keyboard and touchpad combo, and it has been a great experience. And lastly, inside you will find the sleek looking minimal Mi logo and the great looking glossy 1080p IPS display that can reach some pretty high brightness levels and offers some very nice vivid colors. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the specs here and see what we have. So we got two variants, one is equipped with an i5-8250U with 8GB of DDR4 RAM, while the other one is equipped with an i7-8550U, and this time it is equipped with 16GB of RAM. Both are running Intel's latest 8th gen Kaby Lake R series CPUs, which is pretty much like Coffee Lake, but for whatever reason they decided to call it Kaby Lake R or 8th gen Kaby Lake. And just like with Coffee Lake, we get two extra cores over the previous generations for a total of four cores or eight threads on both the i5 and the i7 variants, which is awesome. They also both come with a fast 256GB Samsung NVMe SSD, dual band AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1 and all that good stuff. And no, the RAM is not expandable and if you want more RAM then get the 16GB i7 variant. That said, the storage is easily expandable since it sports two M.2 NVMe slots, but what makes this thing stand out in the Ultrabook crowd is that it is loaded with a dedicated NVIDIA MX150 GPU that includes 2GB of VRAM, offering great performance while keeping things nice and cool, but most importantly, power efficient. Which brings us to the banner life. The banner life here is fantastic in regular everyday to day use, as well as in media consumption and I have tested both laptops and got an average of around 6.5 hours of medium regular use. Ranging from browsing, online video consumption, writing the script, while Skype, Steam, Discord and a vast antivirus running in the background. And all that was on full brightness which was pretty impressive. And throughout my time with it I have never felt the need to plug in a charger or even bring one with me pretty much throughout the whole entire day. And depending on how you use it and what you have running in the background you can easily hit 8 to 9 hours. And charging these things from 15% took on average around 2 hours which is also pretty impressive. Cooling is also a big feature where things are quiet enough to use at night and at times depending on what you do the fans will turn off entirely. And even under heavy load when the fans do ramp up they do stay at some acceptable fan noise levels. So how does it really perform? Well, other than what you're seeing right now, I will have a couple dedicated videos comparing this piece to a low-end MSI gaming laptop as well as a dedicated video testing out a plethora of popular AAA titles while keeping some very impressive temperatures for what this thing is. Well, there you go. If you plan to play games on this thing, then you can definitely do it with very enjoyable frame rates at native resolution in most cases. The gaming performance on both the i5 and i7 are very similar, but if you guys would like a dedicated i5 versus i7 video, then I could do that as well. Let me know in the comment section below. And if it can run games, it can definitely run programs like Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and I had no issues running my heavy PSD files loaded with over 40 layers or so, and it was able to handle them with ease. And editing on Adobe Premiere was also a very smooth experience, scrubbing through the timeline without any issues, with rendering times being comparable to my overclocked desktop i5 4690K. Now you may think the greatness ends there, but it only gets better with the amazing sounding built-in speakers. That can get extremely loud, filling a large room while offering superb audio quality with clean bass, which is fantastic. 
It's really got that shiny speaker aesthetic. You would know what I mean if you have a shiny Bluetooth speaker. In fact, it's so good it beats this MSI gaming laptop speakers. And finally, if you're wondering which variant you should get, well, here is what you need to know. If you are planning on gaming, doing documents, watching videos, browsing, and pretty much doing regular every day to day use, then get the i5 variant with the 8GB of RAM. If you do plan to do editing, Photoshop, Premiere, and run multiple programs at the same time, and in general, if you're a content creator, then I would recommend getting the i7 variant with the 16GB of RAM. And that is pretty much all you need to know. Oh yeah, and one more thing, it actually runs VR as well. So, there you go. So with all that being said, this is the first laptop that gets my Commando step of approval. And all of that is thanks to its amazing thermals, quiet operation, battery life, and performance. So yeah, thank you all for watching, stay tuned for the upcoming videos about this thing, and yeah, that is actually pretty much it for this video. So hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.